Hello everyone, in this video we are going to discuss the timing diagram of 8085 microprocessor more specifically opcode fetch machine cycle. Generally students find it difficult to draw the timing diagram of any machine cycle or instruction because they don't understand it. But let me tell you it is the simplest um, topic of 8085 microprocessor. So once you understand it, it is very easy to draw it. So in this video I will try my best to explain it to you in a very simplistic manner. So before proceeding into the timing diagram let us discuss the basic terminologies that are associated. So the first one is timing diagram. So it is the graphical representation of the execution time taken by any instruction and it is represented in terms of T state. Now the question arises what is a T state? So it is the time of one clock period. It is also defined as a portion of a portion of an operation that is carried out in one system clock period. Generally the ideal clock pulse is represented like this but here we will not consider ideal clock pulse. We will consider an actual clock cycle where there would be a rise time as well as there would be a fall time. Okay. So this is one T state. Now the next term is instruction cycle. So it is defined as the necessary steps that a microprocessor carries out to fetch an instruction and data and then to execute it. So we can say that instruction cycle consists of fetch cycle and execution cycle. Now the next term is machine cycle. What is a machine cycle? So it is the time required to access the memory or input output devices. So coming to the machine cycles of 8085. There are 7 basic machine cycles those are opcode fetch, memory read, memory write, IO read, IO write, interrupt acknowledge and bus idle. So in this video we will discuss the first one that is opcode fetch machine cycle. Once you understand one machine cycle properly then you can draw the machine cycles of the you can draw the timing diagram of rest machine cycles very easily. So before proceeding into the machine cycle the timing diagram uh, let me tell you one thing when you draw the timing diagram generally when one signal is represented in terms of a single line if you want to represent group of signal then it is represented like this. Okay, so single line is for a single signal or single pin and this is for multiple signal pins. Now this slide shows the condition of IO slash M bar S1 and S0 for different machine cycles. Here we are only concerned about the first row because here we are discussing the upcode fetch machine cycle. Here the upcode is stored in the memory. So we are performing memory operation. So that is why IO slash M bar is 0 and for upcode fetch S1 should be 1 and S0 should be 1. The upcode fetch machine cycle is the first machine cycle of every instruction and the length of this cycle is not fixed. So it is either 4 T state or 6 T states. But um, the most common type of upcode fetch machine cycle contains 4 T state where the first T 3 T states are used to fetch the upcode. In the last T state that is T4 is used to decode and execute it. Before we proceed um, uh, to the timing diagram, let us understand how the upcode flows or uh, how this information flows inside the microprocessor. So first the address of the upcode is stored in the program counter. 
So that address from the program counter is loaded in the address bus that is from A8 to A15 and the lower order byte is stored in the AD0 to AD7. So here AD0 to AD7 that works in time multiplex mode that means for the first T state it carries the address and for the rest of the T states it carries the data. So for that we, we need one signal that is called ALE. So when ALE is high then the address in this AD0 to AD7 bus is slashed and uh, after that means for the rest of the T states now this bus that is AD0 to AD7 will carry the data. So for now suppose a0 to A15 contains the address of the upcode. So now we have reached to the address and now we want to read the upcode which is stored in this address. So for that we need RD bar signal here. So when RD bar goes low at that time the information stored at this location is read and it is transferred to the instruction register and after that this information is passed on to the instruction decoder where it is decoded and executed. Now let us discuss the timing diagram. So here uh, we have taken four clock periods and um, in the first clock period the content of the program counter is placed on the address bus. We have just discussed it. So see here from a8 till A15 the higher order memory address is placed and from AD0 to AD7 the lower order address is placed in the first T state. So in this diagram you consider only the first T state ok. And then we know that in the first T state the ALE is activated. What is the need of activation of this ALE signal? We need to latch this address so that it was available for the subsequent memory cycle and after this the AD bus will be available to carry the data. And from the previous table we know that IO slash M bar is 0. So IO slash is IO slash M bar is 0 for all the T states and S1 and S0 are 1. So here S1 is also 1 and S0 is 1. Okay. So you can represent this 3 signal in 3 different lines or you can represent this 3 signal like this. Where inside this you should write IO slash m bar is 0 and s1 is 1 s0 is 1 so you can either follow this type of representation or this type of representation both are correct now in the first t state itself the ale goes low such that the ad bus is ready to carry the data during t2 state now we will discuss the second T state. So in the second T state the lower order address disappears from the AD0 to AD7 line and the RD bar is low. That means our microprocessor is ready to read the opcode from the memory location. So see here there is some gap here. So this gap is known as access time. What is access time? So access time is the time required by the mi microprocessor to read the data from the memory location. Okay. So once the memory location is read, the opcode is placed on the data bus that is from D0 to D7. And in this T state, the microprocessor examines the ready signal. So if the ready signal is high, then the microprocessor enters into the next T state that is T3 
if ready is low then the microprocessor enters into the wait state so now let us consider that our microprocessor is ready and we have entered to the t3 state so in t3 state the microprocessor loads the content of the data bus in the instruction register and here the memory is disabled when the rd bar signal goes high during t3 state okay then we will go to the next t state that is t4 so in the t4 state the processor decodes the upcode okay and on the basis of the instruction received it it means the microprocessor decides whether it has to enter to the fifth t state or it will enter the first t state of a new machine cycle generally one byte instruction those operate on 8 bit data are executed within four t states so this is the machine cycle uh, this is the timing diagram of opcode fetch machine cycle now t5 and t6 t states so when the processor performs stack write internal 16 bit operation or conditional return operation so at that time the the opcode fetch machine cycle has six t states uh, one byte instruction those operate on 16 bit data are also executed in t5 and t6 t state example of such instructions are dcxh pchl sphl inxh etc so one example of this i will discuss it in another video so thank you for watching this video in case you have any doubt you can ask me in the comment section and for more updates please subscribe my channel in my next video i will provide or i will explain the timing diagram of memory read and memory write machine cycles thank you for watching